Through extensive research and first-hand accounts by family members, this documentary follows the path of a select group of pilots and crews from the 22nd Bomber Squadron, along with the 40th Bombardment Unit out of Langley Field, Virginia, which was redesignated the 4th Anti-Submarine Squadron in 1942. By the end of World War II, the brave pilots and crews of these two squadrons would be transferred to England and, in one year, support at least 13,500 resistance fighters by airdropping supplies, weapons, and secret agents deep behind enemy lines. In a highly covert operation known as Carpetbagger. In August 1943, Henry D. McMillan, Jr., waste gunner and engineer with the pilot Wilmer L. Staple crew, arrived in Duncanswell, England, along with the pilot Robert L. Williams crew, flying the B-24 Liberator named the Slightly Dangerous, and the rest of the hand-picked crews from the 22nd and 4th Squadron. Once there, they would continue to fly anti-submarine missions, However, these would be conducted in a much more perilous region of water, known as the Bay of Biscay, off the coast of France. Compared to the coastline of North Carolina and Virginia back in the States, here the danger level was increased exponentially. This was due to a much larger concentration of German U-boats in the water and the constant threat from Hitler's battle-hardened Luftwaffe fighter pilots flying cover from the sky. They would continue these treacherous missions over the next few months, resulting in several crew fatalities and many aircraft barely making it back to base with severe damage. That is, until a new directive was eventually put into place. In November 1943, these two squadrons would prepare to take part in one of the most covert operations of the war. Lieutenant Colonel Heflin and other commanders were summoned to the Bovington Air Base for a top secret meeting with the 8th Air Force. In attendance were members of the OSS Department of the United States under the command of William Wild Bill Donovan, and eventually the OSS would come to be known as the CIA. Also attending this meeting was England's SOE division. Together, these two countries would put in motion a plan to aid the French resistance. This would be done by airdropping spies, weapons, supplies, and saboteurs to resistance pockets on the ground and deep behind enemy lines. Listen to a lot of my dad's war stories. Everything from his missions in the States to his overseas missions in England and Germany. Some of the things I remember the most were all the amazing amounts of medals that my dad received. One of the most distinguished awards and medals was the Distinguished Flying Cross Medal. His whole career, he did nothing but fly, and he did retire in 1960. Once the meeting at Bovington had concluded, the commanders of the 22nd and 4th returned to Duncanswell. They then informed the pilots, air crews, and ground crews to prepare for a massive move of aircraft and personnel to the air base in Alconbury, England. There, they would become a part of the 482nd Pathfinder Bomb Group, would also be redesignated as the 36th and 406th Squadrons and begin the arduous undertaking of reconfiguring the aircraft into consolidated B-24D Liberators. This would enable them to fly in the cover of darkness, also at extremely low levels, barely 500 feet above the ground, and 
began one of the most dangerous missions these crews had flown up to this date in the war. This new mission would come to be known and make history as Code Operation Carpetbagger. <laughs> 